Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The living legend. Master P. Yes, sir. What's up, y'all? Now, P, I seen you came up with some sneakers. Now, yeah. are those sneakers the, the Zions? Yeah. The, uh, no, is that what we they, doing? Yeah, we, we, this is the Manyatis, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Zion might have Nike or Adidas, but guess what? I got these he for got all the leopard court. print. That's the that's that's the leopard. That's the high end fashion. Mm -hmm. Did Zion ever reply for the twenty million you know dollar deal y'all put you know out what? there for him? I'm just saying. That's like, all I'm asking. You know what? If that's on him though, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I tell you all the time. You got to make product. We're not Nike. We don't own none of that stuff. Why we can't do this? And that's what this is about. Us creating a way and an opportunity for us. So this is a new way to buy shoes. You're able to buy this online just like because people don't want to go to the stores mm -hmm. no more. So mm -hmm. it's like, you know what? Get your high end fashion online. Go to Mayatis.com and we got the hookup for you. Is that even possible for you to be able to get a shoe deal outside of your shoe you wear? You know the court? what? That's, that's why we have to know our business because yeah. uh, you don't have to sign a deal to wear shoes off the court. You can wear whatever you want to wear mm -hmm. unless you tied into some type of lifetime deal or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, when you go out, you wear whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. You're not on the basketball court. I think as athletes, we have to take control of our own destination. Mm -hmm. To be mm -hmm. honest, which is it's, it's all about negotiation mm -hmm. and knowing your power. So I feel like this could be something big. You know, maybe if not him, it's gonna be somebody that's gonna look look at Kawhi and let him. I like that dude. He think out of the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Surprised he, everybody. Man, look, he wasn't worried about none of that stuff. He went and got his money and said, "Look, man, I'm gonna do what's best for me." Absolutely. I said, you know? I so mm -hmm. for I feel like for us, when you look at this, we all talk about Versace and Gucci. We don't own none of this. Every time we sell one of these shoes, we putting money back into the community. You know what I'm saying? So this go to helping inner city kids with education. Now, how does the, how does the city feel right now with with with, with the new Pelicans now with with Zion? It's exciting. And, oh yeah, no, nah, it, it's 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 exciting, man. To be honest with you, uh, we just left Essence, and uh, the city excited. You know what I'm saying? Zion got a chance to do something. You know, especially if they win. I know it's gonna take a little while, but if they win, like the city will be behind him. Mm -hmm. They will be. That's one thing about New Orleans. You know, I feel like this is an opportunity for him, like what Jordan did. For, for Chicago, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Coming to, even though Chicago a bigger city, but New Orleans is definitely is that platform now where a lot of stars are coming from and it, it's, it's about to be big down there. I think people scared for Zion though because New Orleans got all that good food and they want him to watch yeah. his weight. Yeah, well, you know what? You got to do that anyway, wherever you go. Yeah. It's called New discipline. Orleans is worse though. You know, but it's discipline. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's discipline. Wherever you go, you could get into whatever. You yeah. get some you know, healthier options. I mean, it's a hood in every city, everywhere you go, so people get caught up with that, man. My mm -hmm. thing is, you know, uh, you got to do what's best for you. You have to police yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? Plus, when I go to New Orleans, it's like a special treat for me. That's why I eat. But if I live there, I'm sure I'll be more careful. Yeah. Yeah, you got to. Now, mm -hmm. Essence must have felt amazing for you this year because you guys did the screening for I Got the Hookup 2 and it mm -hmm. sold out. Yes. So what was it like screening that movie there? Yeah, did he call you? I, was a, I nope. didn't get a call. I didn't get a call. Damn, I, P. You know who did We was down there, too. Juju hit me, and she was like, hey, are you Y'all know y'all was invited. Now, get out y'all feelings, dog, for real. <laughs> yeah. Get out y'all feelings. Y'all worse than Tyler Perry, dog, for real. I wanted to buy like, tickets, bro, but it sold feeling. out. Now, let me tell you something. I bumped into Tyler Perry at the Essence. I'm thinking, like, I don't really know, bro. I'm like, <laughs> man, get out your feelings, dog. Like, I was thinking, like, you had a run in or something? No, I don't even, like, it's just the spirits <laughs> wasn't right. You know, like, you from New Orleans, you think now I'm doing movies. I guess yeah. maybe, like, man, now you're doing movies now, whatever, but I've been doing movies. Right. So I bump into him, and uh, I'm thinking, he gonna be, yeah, big brother, I'm proud of you. The movie, I got the hookup too. You know, the big screening was big, the whole city showed up, you mm -hmm. know. It was just, like, awkward. Like, like you were scared or something like like bro you know like man I'm happy for you mm -hmm. yeah. you know it's enough opportunity for all of us because really I tell you all the time it's really not that much money for us to make in filmmaking because we don't right. own that right I, I heard the speech he said on BET and all that man but that's what we talked maybe because seven years ago we talked like look man we just hook up and do something but then you don't show up. But I, that, this is my first time seeing him so I, I forgot about all that right so I'm just like man look. I'm thinking it's gonna be, you know, like we done took the city over, like you said, yeah, you yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like, I don't know, dog. Like You ain't invite him. See, he was mad he ain't get invited. You know too. what, dog? <laughs> Y'all know y'all could just show up. He know he could just show up. But I'm I just think that you just show up at though. I'm sure it, it was packed. It was crazy. To be honest with you, know, we brought Hollywood to New Orleans mm -hmm. and we did something that is history because 
you know, this movie is owned by me and Romeo as a father and son, a star in this film, mm -hmm. and also finances. Like I said, it's only 5%. I mean, you know this, 5% of all the production owned by African Americans. Mm -hmm. 95%, we don't, that means we don't own nothing. So you see us on all these big films and all these big yeah. projects, but the real money is in the production. You know, even with me, I, I, I watch them like, they don't really want us to own the production part. They want us to be in front of the camera. I had to really go, you know, take one, I just wanted to check it out. So I took a project, like a No Limit project, even to like a BET. I'm like, man, it was just hard to get it through the system. Mm -hmm. Even though I got the money and everything, it don't matter, it was like, yeah, and I went got another person of another color to go and went right through. Right. I'm yeah, like that's, that's crazy. That's crazy to me, you know. And I'm just like, it's like you. I, I seen when you uh when you had Connie on because I talked to Connie too, and I'm telling mm -hmm. I be telling like you know what you really have to get involved in this and really be about the change. Because I seen when you asked about the Nipsey Hussle thing, you ain't go too in detail with mm -hmm. it. But I like what you said. Like, was Nipsey up for that before he passed? And she told you no. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, that was crazy because a humanitarian award, like we've been in the community for years, over 20 something years, mm -hmm. you know, Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. and y'all know Nipsey, my dog, like mm -hmm. that's my boy, but I'm like, man, give people their flowers while they're here. You know, don't just get caught up into the hype thing. That's you why know? I introduced you as a living legend. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? You remember uh, Nipsey's daddy was trying to say that. Why y'all didn't get that to my son while he was here? Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? I just think that everybody get caught up whatever hot instead of doing what's right. Mm -hmm. And that's my thing with Connie that I'm going to talk to her about. If she want to talk, if not, it's cool. But it's like, you know, you got to be real. You got to be real. You can't do this. This man deserved a lot of this stuff while he was here. And I just think that for the Humanitarian Award, that was a big thing for, you know what I'm saying? Like last year. You could have got that last year. He could yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they knew who he was last year. He got into it with the guy at the thing. They was acting like they ain't know him. He slapped him. <laughs> See? <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, had, they had him performing the pre-show with YG. Okay, so yeah. if that was me at 50 Cent, we wouldn't even be able to get into the BET Awards <laughs> nope. this year. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. And mm -hmm. then his music, it was crazy. His music was incredible last year. The year before that. It was the best rap album of the year. I said that numerous and times. And guess what? Why he get it this year? Because that was already passed. Mm-hmm. The same album that sells all the time. Yep. That sold 52,000 copies when he first came out two years ago and now it's gone to millions. Mm -hmm. So I just I just feel like, man, us as people, we got to be real. Like you say, we seen the thing with Tyler Perry talk about ownership, but man, look, we got to be real with each other. We got to come together. We got to right. stop. At, you know, we can't be faking with each other. I think maybe, I remember I, I said in an interview one time, I, I, I wouldn't know. Uh, put no dress on, that's the truth. I don't care who it is. I ain't mm -hmm. put no dress on to make no money. That's just me. Mm -hmm. But it's not meaning to nobody. So I don't know if people take that the wrong way or mm -hmm. whatever, that's just me as a man. Now what about when you own your own stuff the way Tyler does though? Cause I, I used to think that way about Tyler too, but I was like, man, he was putting the dress on cause he wanted to, not cause somebody made him to. That's, that's all that's him. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care about right. that. Like, that's what I'm saying. So I feel like we all got our opinions. Like I got the hookup too. I mean, this is a big movie for us. This is a movement. This is not just a movie. Like they don't own this because you got you got to realize, man, why it's so important. When we do a project like Black Panther, we didn't benefit off of that, man. No. Like people, we look as black people was in the movie. We mm -hmm. was happy and excited. But it wasn't us. Yeah, yeah, for me. So this is, even though a movie like this, so think about this. A movie like I Got to Hook Up too. we did this for the budget, we did it for, and we did it for millions of dollars. But imagine if we had hundreds of millions of dollars to make a project. Mm -hmm. How would it look? Mm -hmm. So this is the growth. This is why this is important, because we're coming back into the community, putting money back into the community. But we it's a process. Mm -hmm. We got to grow with this, just like I did with music. I just didn't jump straight out and made hundreds of millions of dollars. It was a process, yeah. because the production has to get bigger and bigger. So that's why I was saying we have to support us, because this is only one of few where it's about to go at. Now, you you did you backed this all yourself, or did you have investors? Well, no. people like, I'm going to help you, I'm jumping in on this, so let Man, me... Man, a lot of people talked about that, but at the end of the day, they wasn't there. So me and Romeo ended up putting our own money. We had 126 speaking roles in this film. Y'all built Brooke a Guinness World yeah, Record, right? Guinness Book yeah. of World Records for the most speaking roles in a film. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is big because we put underdogs. And I think that's what a lot of people, you look at a DC Young Fly, you look mm -hmm. at a Fat Boy SSE, mm -hmm. uh, Just Hilarious, Just Hilarious mm -hmm. P.O., uh, A.J. Johnson, 
uh, John Weatherspoon, a lot of these people, the younger people, they wouldn't have mixed them up together like this. This is a two two generations. So this has to be done. This is going to change the way films are marketed. Mm -hmm. uh, Juju's in this film. You know, I mean, this is crazy to cast, but they all work. They all came to work and did what they had to do. I mean, you got like a Gary Johnson, a guy, a guy that should have been famous, mm -hmm. should have been big, mm -hmm. funny, hilarious, you know, but Hollywood, they turn their back on the real. So that's my thing for us. This is going to open up doors for every African-American and Latino filmmaker, minority. Like, you can own your own business after this. You can own your own product. That's what this is about. This how, is not about me. How long did it take to, to film? This took us uh, three months. Three months. Three months. We started last year in July, and the movie coming out July 12th. Well, it's supposed to come out earlier this year, right? And it, it no. moved? Never? No. Okay. No, it wasn't supposed to come out earlier. We we just did the red carpet. We did that July 5th, did that earlier. So let's talk about the rollout of it, because it is in theaters, but then you also can get it and, and stream it? Yeah, so what you can do, so think about this, y'all. They figure out a way to block us. So I, I, I want to thank AMC to come to the table. You know, it's an African American lady named Nicole that just opened up the doors for us to put us in theaters. But they stop you. They'll limit you in the theaters because they don't get none of the money. Mm. So we have to keep fighting, keep fighting, and building this and building this. So at the same time, we could put this on video on demand. You could go on iTunes and download this. So it's a it's a new way that they can't stop us. Even with the power of the internet, they won't be able to stop us no more. You know what I'm saying? That's the great thing about the internet and the way technology has changed because pe some people want their movies now. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to get it on demand at the same time. That's so. dope. Yeah, I found out the other day that theaters don't make money off the movie. Yeah, well, you know what? It's a, it they all depends. That. It, de <laughs> it, it depends how they market it. Mm -hmm. right. You know, like if they're going to put the big marketing dollars behind you to make sure. So you got to really realize what it is. That's why I say we got to come together because it's all about space and inventory. Mm -hmm. So do if they put you in the right space so you can sell. So that's what our people don't understand. Like, yeah, you have some great movies that should have been blockbusters, but they don't have the space. It's almost like if you put a product out and they don't put you on the shelf. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, it, right? those those are the type of things that we really have to learn. And that's what I, that's what I'm talking about. Ownership is so important. Mm -hmm. you, you spoke about Nipsey. He's got a song on the soundtrack, and he said he recorded it two days before his death. Yeah. So uh, one one thing about Nipsey, man, he was always a stand up guy. He's probably one of the one of the most uh, realest guys I met. That if I ask him for something, he gonna send it. He gonna get it done. He gonna go in no question, no talk. And uh, he looked up to you though. He used to yeah. say, he used to say no. He used to call his label No Limit of the West. Yeah, you know what? And, and let me tell you how I met him. I met him with this, uh, with uh, with uh, with with Low from Chicago. He moved out there in the in the Cali. He was fifteen hundred, and he do all do you know was doing all his music and stuff like that. So he hooked us up. Say, man, look, you know, you out in L. A. Man, you and Nipsey to get together. And when we got to the studio, it was just magic. We just started making songs. I think we made like over. 17, 18 songs, just, just, just dropping them. Mm -hmm. So you know, we had, we had remixed that, that rap nigga song too. We had remixed, supposed to be me, Jeezy, uh, Boosie, and Jay Z. Oh, the I ain't, the, I ain't nothing like you other yeah, rap nigga. Yeah, wow. Yeah. So did that get done? It, it's done. It's done. So they probably gonna put that out. But that's what I'm saying, man. These record companies, we gotta stop. We gotta stop all these people from controlling what we have. Mm -hmm. You know, because even right now, look all the money they making off them. Is his kids really gonna get that? Or how long the process? How how do how do that take? You know, because now you're dealing with a state and you're dealing with record companies. So that's why I was saying we have to take control mm -hmm. because, I mean, he was with Atlantic Records mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the type of things I was trying to show him when he was alive. Like, look, man, and he was doing it, but it's just sad tragedy to where you know you come from somewhere and you die in that same hood. And that's my thing to educate the next generation that we have to figure out how can we, you know, educate ourselves even about the environments that we're in. Because it's about putting putting things in our community, but it's also about surviving and living to be able to, you know, to be there to make sure. Mm -hmm. I mean his kids, you know, his girl, his mom, his dad, I mean, this this is a tragedy for them, man. Uh, this guy should still be here today. And you you told page six you would get more respect if you were a white businessman. Well, you've been speaking on that. Though. Yeah, you know what the sad thing about it? I I was saying that for like even the athletes and entertainers, like we'll we'll talk. We don't want to give us what we do because of our skin color and what you said, or either like 
like what we was talking about when we talked about Kodak, we'll give this guy 10 or 15 percent or even 20 mm-hmm. percent with not even thinking about it. But with us, we got to, oh, well, what what this for? And I mm-hmm. mean, I mean, if I'm going to go get you a deal, mm-hmm. I deserve a percentage. Yeah. That's yeah. just business. Yeah. You don't even ask the white man no question. None. Yeah. Just like right now. I mean, just like you said, it's like mm-hmm. I think even with him, I think after he get out of jail this time, he's going to wake up and see that these lawyers are robbing them. They yeah. are taking his money. I mean, he even posted up. It's like- He posted today, yeah. So those are the type of things, but you know the lawyer gonna come back and say, well, man, he was talking about the lip. Nah, man, that man, no, after a while, you will see. Sometime God gonna put you through something and you gonna see, maybe you at a stage in your life where you don't wanna see that, mm-hmm. but you will eventually grow up and start saying, man, well, how much this cost? Because they're not doing it for free. Mm-hmm. Any of those lawyers, I mean, whether NBA young boy in jail, whoever in jail mm-hmm. right now, those lawyers are not working for free. Mm-hmm. Right. They're going to get their money off right. top. They're going to suck every quarter you got until you don't have them no more. Then they're going to forget about you. Now, let me mm-hmm. ask you this. There's a lot of people that come to you for advice, but who does Master P go to when he needs to learn something or get some advice? To be honest with you, um, any, anybody that's, that's doing well, like my thing is if you're successful at something, you know, I want to learn. I'm like a sponge. I tell people money, come and go. Like, I could lose everything and get it back. Money come and go. That's how life is. Uh, when you look in the Bible, Job, you know, he had lost it all. The mm-hmm. devil told God, look, man, take it from him. Let's see what he do. You got to be happy in good and bad times. So my thing is I do a lot of studying. I tell people, you know, being poor is a state of mind. Being rich is a state of mind. So knowledge and wisdom is what you should want. And that's that's what I seek. So whatever I could read in a book, whatever I could find online, I try to fill my mind with positive stuff and uh, and then people. People that are smarter uh, experts at what they do. Mm-hmm. So, you know, people should look for other experts if you want to be successful. So that's what I do. I, I look at other people that are successful. I celebrate their success. I celebrate their success. And even the people that came before me, like I, I always talk about like the Lil J's from uh, Rap A Lot, uh, to Tony Draper, you know, the Luke Skywalker, those guys opened the doors for me in this business in hip hop where I'm able to do what I do. So be be always willing to celebrate the people that came before you. And so, you know, and then, you know, my homeboy buys and, you know, the team I have around me is like, man, those guys is the ones that that I, I celebrate and I say, you know, Without those people, I wouldn't be who I am. Now, so, for people who haven't seen I Got the Hookup 1, how would you describe I Got the Hookup 2 for somebody who's just jumping into this and saying, well, what is the movie about? Well, so the movie is funny. Funny, funny. I mean, Romeo played detective, and uh, he's my nephew in the movie, but it's about gentrification. Mm-hmm. That's the most important thing. We're losing everything, man, uh, in the community. You see that big in New Orleans, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, you got to realize... Two, it's a lot of um, mental illness going on. Mm -hmm. So we touch on that in the movie. But it's us coming together as a family. We own this restaurant called Big Papa, and we losing it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, blue character, he want to party and have fun. And, you know, my character, black, I'm like, man, we got to get this business together. And then, you know, we have kids now. So our kids are grown, and they get caught up. And, you know, we get caught up with, with the Colombians and, we have to figure out how to get, how to, you know, how to make it right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a funny movie. It's a real message. Is 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 a little action in it too. So, you know, it, it's it's one of those things that everybody gonna enjoy because you know, uh, even Funny Mike, Funny Mike from Louisiana, man, he 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 really stood out in this movie. Him and DC Young Fly, Fat Boy SSE and mm-hmm. PO. I mean, I, what I love about this movie is giving the next generation an opportunity that never would have got a chance in Hollywood. That's how hard it is. Like, it's really hard to to uh, get past a lot of these auditions and get a role like this. How was your relationship with Romeo when y'all worked together? Did y'all clash? Did y'all have conflict? Like Now, you know what? It was good because things that Romeo went to school for at USC and, and he understand right. the behind the scenes. He really took his time. He passionate about, you know, making a film, uh, I needed that Mm -hmm. because with me, I'm like, you know what? This is the way I want it done. But then, you know, (laughs) me and my son doing this together where, you know, it was a beautiful thing because I seen he thought one way, 
I thought another one. I was going to mm-hmm. say, I bet you learned a lot from your son yeah. when I was asking you who you learned from because I could see how that can happen. Like, he has a whole different path that he took to get to where he is. Yeah. And the way you raised him. Yeah. He yeah you it. know what? And, and like I said, uh, it was good. It was good because we balanced each other at the end. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we reached these two worlds together. Like, you know, you got a new millennial. You got the old school, you got it all mixed up. And then the soundtrack, the music is incredible. Uh, me and Jeezy got a song on there called Gone. Uh, Romeo got a new single that's coming out. He's getting back into the music business just because of this soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Uh, OSOS, these girls is hot. <laughs> you know, they got they, the name of the group. I was like, you know, putting a new group on the soundtrack. I was like, man, these girls really got it going on and that OSOS stand for on some other sh- mm-hmm. so it's like but I like them like I'm I'm like I wanted to give the millennials an opportunity uh the King Roy's uh this is this this, this soundtrack to me was probably the most important thing of bridging those gaps mm-hmm. together you know was was uh you know the Lacey K's you know taking or the E forties. I mean, it's a lot of talent on here. That's that's incredible. As a father, how is it knowing you raised a strong young brother like Romeo? Like, like man, when you see him, I'm proud of you. Man, I, I'm I'm so proud because you know a lot of my friends with me and Romeo grew up at. They kids dead or in prison, and to see Romeo went to college and he's still doing this thing and he a boss now. Mm-hmm. For us to be able to do this together, man, I, I feel like God has blessed me. I feel like, you know. I must have really changed my life and start doing the right thing, because mm-hmm. a lot a lot of parents don't get a chance to see this. Mm-hmm. And if I didn't change my life, I'd probably been dead or in prison. So to be able to be here with my son and and watch him grow and knowing that we're building a generational wealth, like we're gonna be around this family is gonna be around even after me. Mm-hmm. That Romeo is that focus, knowing that he have to make the sacrifice. I know I had to make sacrifices, but even for him to not have to. You know, live the party life like a lot of these young stars are living, knowing that you got to be committed to something. Mm-hmm. And that's our whole thing. You know, a lot of people speak on loyalty. We don't speak on loyalty no more. We like, no, forget loyalty. Anybody could be loyal, but are you committed? Mm-hmm. Or are, you, are you commitment? Commitment is the most important thing mm-hmm. in anything you do. If you want to be successful, you have to be committed. You know, so. Did you put a lot of pressure on him growing up? Always. <laughs> My dad put a lot of pressure on me, so I had to put a lot of pressure on him. Right. You know, and I think that parents shouldn't be friends with their kids. Be a parent, mm-hmm. no matter who are successful. You know, be a parent. And you got to put pressure on your kids because you don't want them to get caught up. You got to prepare them. So that's what I do with my foundation. We've been doing this for over 21 years. It's like I put pressure on these kids because I want them to be successful. Um, you know, I, and, and we all of them, we're not just – in Louisiana, we in Compton, we we in Englewood, we in Louisville, Kentucky, we in Texas. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I, my thing is I want to put pressure on the next generation because we have to hold them accountable. You know, a lot of people talk about, oh, you young. What that mean? Yeah. You got to stop <laughs> saying that. Yeah. I mean, you young enough to make a baby. You young enough to have money. Young then enough you, to get put in handcuffs. You young enough to get put in handcuffs, <laughs> so you should be young enough to be held accountable for whatever you do, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's, when we start putting that type of pressure on our kids, they're gonna realize that it's real out here. It's it's, it's the real world we're dealing with. And it's hard to put that work ethic in the kids when you, like you was rich for a long time when Romeo was coming up. I remember seeing Romeo and he was like four or five in radio stations with you. So how does he, how you instill that work ethic and hustling him? Because I think we still connected to the hood just like now, like, we we was there. Like, Romeo was there with me as a baby, as a kid growing up. But then, you know, me, my family's still there, so mm-hmm. I'm still connected. So Romeo birthdays wasn't like a normal Hollywood kid. Mm-hmm. His birthdays probably was in the projects. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. mentally I was still prepared and trying to figure out, like, till it really hit me, like, man, I can't be back here like this no more. Mm-hmm. If I really want to live... I got to do some other things. I mean, you know, go back to the Nipsey thing. You know, people, we talk about keeping it real. Sometimes these people don't care about it. Cause I, you got to realize God is real, but there's also devils out there. So the devil is real, too. Lord so you got to know that. I think that's what that's what, that's what what God taught me. Like, I was like, you know what? 
I love my homeboys. I love my hood. But at the same time, broke people don't have nothing. There's a reason why everybody's in that situation. They all cool because they all don't have nothing. Mm -hmm. Whoever gets something is like somebody hitting the lottery. Whoever hit the lottery, they're going to break in your house and rob and kill you. So you're going to have to figure out how to, okay, I got to move out the situation, but I, I'll come back to help. Right. For me, I'm helping the kids mm -hmm. and the elderly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been doing that for 21 years. That's all I want to do. I don't. I fell on old no man nothing but love. I love all my homeboys. Sometime if I can help them, I will. But don't depend on me. To be honest, because I ain't never depend on nobody. I've been in the hood. Nobody ever gave me nothing. All right. You know what I'm saying? People say, give me a hand up. Hand. Nobody don't do that in the hood. You got to go out there. and It's like me with the shoe company. I had to start small. Start with one shoe, mm -hmm. you know, two shoes. You know, you're not going to just get to a million. Right. Same thing with, with records. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on the road with Tupac and them. They wasn't going to do nothing for me. Mm -hmm. I was just the opening act. I had to get out there and make a name for myself. I mean, yeah. that was enough right there giving you that opportunity, though. I think some people get really impatient, too. They see other people's success, and they want to get success really quickly, and they don't understand it is a process. Like, you do have to start small. Well, you, you do have to build up. You don't want to sacrifice, though. They want the success. Mm -hmm. You know, like they say in the Bible, you know, success is not going to come without hard work. You got to have the faith, but you got to put the work in. Faith without works is dead. Exactly. So you got to realize that a lot of people say they want, they want help, all that, but they really don't. They just want you to give them something. Then the right. next week they're calling you back. They need you to give them something else because they didn't earn nothing. All you got to do is be like, let me see the business plan that you have. Okay. And wait for that to come. And then they, then and they, 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 then they, they go. Or <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you give them something and now they owe you now, so they ain't going to want to come They're not going to ask you no again. More. You see what I'm saying? They hide. <laughs> so it's, it's sad because the other cultures don't do that. Mm -hmm. They're not living like that. And then the ones of us that make it, we turn our backs on each other. So, you know, like we was talking about earlier, it's like, With man, Tyler Berry? Well, I, don't, I, I won't say that. I can't say that. But I'm just saying it's people out there that do that. Like, they change from where they used to come from. Like me, man, I, I only know I got to go back and help these kids. I'm going to go the right way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're not mm -hmm. going to tip me. You're not going to press me. But guess what? I'm going to be there with them kids. You're not going to stop me from being there with them kids. And... um but I, I'm not going to change who I am because I realized I was once one of those people right. that was chasing my dreams and my goals. So I, I got I to gotta go there. Even when I don't want to go, I got to go because of those kids. What, is Master one P specific, want? what does Master uh -huh. P want now? Like, what, what are you eyeing? Is, is it, I want, like, what's, what's next on your, on your bucket list? You, you did the music, you did the movies. What do you want to own? Like, what's the next chapter for Master P? Well, I mean, it's all about product now. It's about product mm -hmm. and it's about the movies. Now, I feel like we haven't tapped into the movies as African-Americans. I mean, I'm talking about really controlling. To be able to have those budgets, $100 million, $200 million making those type of films, we have to take over this niche market, what we're doing now, and build up and build up and build up. Because once you control the entertainment side of this, you will control for us the soundtracks to everything mm -hmm. in this. So I, I feel like we'll be able to give people more jobs, We'll be able to help more people. But we also could, because as African-Americans, Latinos, we we spend over a trillion dollars a year. But none of the money coming back to us. But is that possible? Because, you know, you, we, we talk about it all the time. Like, you look at somebody like a Zion. Yeah. Let's say Zion went to an HBCU. What that would do to that HBCU community would be way bigger. Let's say Zion signed with you instead of a, a Nike or a Reebok. What it would do for our own community would be way more. It just takes that one person to do it, but it's... That one person willing to do it. Well, you got to think out the box. We just talked about Kawhi Leonard. Like, he thinks out the box. Somebody's going to see the vision. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's not running away from what we got to do. Like I said, this is a real movement. We're Somebody's going to have to start you. So if that's the case, you could talk about me starting No Limit 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted to do it. Everybody just wanted to be on the radio. Everybody just wanted to have records mm -hmm. up. I had to say, I'm taking everything I got and put into this and grow with it. You might not see it right now. You might think, I got the hookup too. Oh, well, you know, this is a hood movie. No, this ain't a hood movie. This is a start of something big. And somebody has to do it. Bob Johnson took BET and owned BET. Now, the difference is, when we go to BET, we're really not going for us no more. So somebody else have to fulfill those shoes. It's going to be hard. 
I get it. Everything that I've done, done that's big, gigantic, it wasn't easy. Right. That's so, what's so interesting to me. We've had so many examples, but for some reason, these niggas still think white ice is cold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. And we don't even try. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your destination, how you get to it? How you get to it? You got to start from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we are doing. We saying we're going to stand up. We, we, we at that level now of maturity where we could go after this and build a brand like this. You know, if, if it had to take us, then now we have to go to TV. We got to take this take this over. You know what I'm saying? We have to start. So it ain't like it can't be done. The sad thing about it, like we just said, we don't think we could do it this we don't think that we could go close them big deals like that. Mm-hmm. We don't think that, I mean, if it was me, if I was Zion, I was just came up, man, give me that bread, let me go do this, I'm going to go out here and market this for you off the court. Cool. But if it's not him, that's cool. They ain't supposed to be him. We're going to keep doing what we got to do. We're going to find the next one. Like you say, somebody's going to think out of the box and mm-hmm. going to say, you know, I'm going to get my money from Nike. Because I said, go get your money from Nike and Adidas. You know what Know what Michael Jordan would be if he owned half of Nike when he first started, because he mm-hmm. created... I wasn't wearing Nikes back then. <laughs> I was wearing Adidas or Converse. Let's be honest. Mm-hmm. When Michael Jordan put that shoe on and made Jordan, that made every kid mm-hmm. want to wear Nike. That's where the company... That company made billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Jordan just getting billions. That's crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? So imagine, he should have he should have got half of that company. That's why I don't laugh at Big Baller brand. I wouldn't bought yeah. me some of them slides. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, you know, we need to support us no matter yeah. what. You know, and I'm I'm supporting people that's thinking outside of the box and thinking of ways that we're going to be able to put money back into to the community and help us. Mm-hmm. That's the only way we're going to be able to do it. We're going to have to make some money. Right. Some real money. Mm-hmm. Not just go and get a job. Say, oh, I'm in the movie. I'm playing a role. And then next, you're looking for a job next week. No, we saying we making a movie. Then next month, we're making another movie. And then the next month, we're making mm-hmm. more movies. Mm-hmm. And then we could be a Lionsgate mm-hmm. or one of those companies. You know what I'm saying? Now, what made you want to touch on mental illness and um, I got the hook up too? That's something we don't talk about in our hood enough. Well, you know what? Well, let me tell y'all something, man. So with me coming from the hood, I understand that when you're making these movies, it's touching on real life. I noticed that in my hood, almost every house I went to, everybody had an older brother that was dead, uh, another brother they kept in the closet or in the back room. Like, people don't know. Mm-hmm. Like, we've been dealing with that for a long time. Mm-hmm. And now, in this generation... People don't take their medicine. You're dealing with that with rappers mm-hmm. to whatever. Like, you have good people. Mm-hmm. I know some great people in my family, but when they don't take their medicine or they, they have a problem, they're the worst people you want to be around. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, they turn evil. Right. So I'm like, we, we have to expose that and let people know, like, you know what? We got to take care of people. This mm-hmm. might be some little thing as medicine, or it might be some people don't need the medicine, and the insurance companies is giving it to them mm-hmm. and really messing their minds up. So we have to bring some attention to that. Yeah, Aren't how many times do we see the cops kill somebody because the mom called the cops because she's like, look, he has a mental illness yeah. situation. They scared him. And then yeah. they come and then they end <laughs> yeah. up and they're like, he's not going to harm anybody. Yeah. And it ends up happening. Yeah, what, what thing, one thing y'all got to realize when you're dealing with somebody with mental illness they are really not in their right mind. Mm-hmm. So it's not them that, that are doing the negative things. So when you get them back into their right mind, they're a whole total different person. So you don't know. But if you don't know that person, because if I walk up to right. somebody, I don't know, like, well, what you said? You better be really with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to get real. Yeah. You know? And so I remember, you know, I got a suit on. I'm in downtown L.A. in the fashion district. And uh guy got, come on the elevator. And I'm with all these other guys with the suits on, but I'm like, dog. And the dude just looked at me and started growling. <laughs> started growling. <laughs> started growling. <laughs> I, said, I told him, I said, man, I'm not the one. I'm just letting you know I'm not the one. And it's like, you know, I, I realized that I could have hurt this man, mm-hmm. but I, I knew that he had a... He had a problem. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you can tell, sometimes you can't yeah, tell. Like you said, so, if you don't know. He ain't yeah. trying to bite you or nothing. He was just growling. I don't think he wanted to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but even, <laughs> even de- we talk about mental health, de- even dealing with the trauma of things you see yeah. in the hood, the yeah. violence. Like, that yeah. stuff ain't normal, getting nah. shot at, all that. Nah. People, seeing people getting killed. Nah, man, I, I just think the man up above, because I've seen a lot of that, and I've seen a lot of people lose it. You know, losing loved ones, people getting killed in front of them, you know, uh, so, yeah, no, I, th- I think it's a serious 
serious, serious uh, thing that we do have to share some light on. And I think a lot of people are afraid to do that. How did you deal with it? Because you saw a lot, man. You saw a lot growing up. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I just put my trust and faith in God. And uh, I start realizing, you know, we start reading that Bible that that uh, that's the only way you could really get through it. So, you mm -hmm. know, even though I come from the streets, I'm like, man, that man up above really spared me. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm more humble and more appreciative for just being able to be here and be with my kids and in the change and grow because mm -hmm. a lot of people don't want to change or grow. They they want to stay stuck in the same, mm -hmm. you know, same place. So I, I, I'm thankful, man. It's a blessing. I, I don't know. Like, it could have went either way for me. Did you ever go to therapy or anything like that? No. No, I just I just dealt with it. All right. I just dealt with it and, and prayed on it and, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and overcame a lot of this stuff. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, man, this is, this is, like, I just feel like, I don't want to be around a bunch of people that's talking. That's why I got into business for myself, and I'm going to help. I'm, I, I want to be able to make movies. I want to be able to sell product, and I know what I have to do, like, for our people. I don't talk about it. You know, uh, me and Charlotte, we was talking. I didn't even know she was out here from. She, oh, Jazz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she okay. from, from, uh, from Compton. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. She oh, from Compton. Yeah, yeah. she from Compton. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, there another one. She's oh, yeah. from, oh, yeah. She's yeah. from yeah. yeah, yeah. But so what I'm just saying is coming in here, like even with her, like mm -hmm. she was, you know, she said she come to a lot of our events that I do in Compton. But uh, you know, I do a lot of stuff helping the kids mm -hmm. and helping the elderly. And I didn't even know. But she was like, "Oh, I come to your events." I'm mm -hmm. like, "You come to my events?" I didn't know. But just being up here, that just go to show you. Mm -hmm. And we've been doing that a long yeah, time. And yeah. I'm not from Compton, but I'm right. committed. That's what I'm telling y'all about being committed. Right. I'm committed to the community. You know, I can't live in L.A. and not help the kids in the community mm -hmm. or the elderly out there. So, you know, I know it ain't for everybody. I tell people, because everybody, like, even the things I do from the celebrity games and all the stuff for the scholarships, you know, I meet a lot of guys that are successful. Mm -hmm. They, oh, yeah, man, I'm going to help you. I want to do that. At the end of the day, none of them ever show up. You got to really want that from your heart. But if I say I'm going to, let's go party, let's go take a, a, a trip, they yeah, all here. Yeah. If I got 100 Gs, I got whatever. I'm like, oh, you could just go throw that up in the club. I'm like, man, nah, I'm not into that, dog. I'm in a, you know, and I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just that I know what I want out of life. If I'm going to be successful and run a big multi-million dollar, billion dollar film company, then I have to be committed. So, you know, that's where my commitment comes from. Like, I know what I have to do. How's and your brother doing, Simura? He hanging in there, man. Like, like. When you incarcerated, you know, and you in there for a crime you didn't commit, it's hard on you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely hard on you, but but he's praying, we praying for him. And I just wanna thank all the fans out there, man, that that uh that that's been keeping up with him because uh, I mean, it's like though, it's like that like I said, you believe in that man up above, he could turn this all around. Cause the system, when the system wants you caught up, you done. Yeah. There's nothing you could do. You know, but deal with it. I spoke to him a year ago. I, I was in. The, I just happened to be in the mall, and I believe it was his daughter. His daughter was talking to him. Yeah. And just happened to walk up to me. He was like, yeah. I'm talking to my dad now. So I spoke to him. He, he yeah. seemed like he was in good spirits. Oh, yeah. Nah, you know, he, I mean, he a G. He going to hold it down. But mm -hmm. it's just like he done missed so many years of his life mm -hmm. to not be out here with his daughters. You know, like, that's that's hard for a man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So so hopefully this will be able to turn around real soon. I mean, what? Well, uh, what's the girl that's going to the prison letting everybody out, man? Kim uh, Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. Yeah, man, I'm about to call Kanye, man. You want to do something, y'all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm about to go knock on their door, man. Like, y'all y'all got to do something because, I mean, it's sad, man, that a, a black man could get caught up into a system and it's, it's, it's hard to get out of. You got to prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Did you watch When They See Us? Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. That's hard to watch. Yeah, it was. So. You know, it's interesting. We had a Taylor. You got to go soon, too. Uh, all right. Okay. Taylor's one of our producers. She worked here. She said, why do older men from New Orleans, when they talk, they sound like they're crying? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, they've seen a lot and been through a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I mean, maybe that's just the way we talk, man. I'm just, we different. You know, when I first came out to New York, 
The girls like the way I talk. Cause yeah, we like I was out there, it was like, can you talk for me? I'm like, talk. Like, that's just the way I talk. I'd be like, yeah, man, but you know what's happening with your baby. That's why I love like. going to New Orleans. <laughs> so it's like, I'm in the club talking to this girl. She just want to talk. I'm like, I ain't trying to talk right now. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> like, he sounds like he cares. He sounds like he cares when he talks. No, because we were just in New Orleans and I was with my girls and they was like, I just love that accent. And yeah. they do like to hear y'all talk. Man, <laughs> that got me in trouble out here in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to everybody. <laughs> I'm in the club just going off. Like, man, shut, what's happening? Come on, just talk. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres still your celebrity crush? Man, come on now, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> you said Ellen DeGeneres? That's what he said. She you likes know. to hear him talk. <laughs> you know what? Let me tell y'all something, though. What's crazy. <laughs> Ellen is from New Orleans. What I like about her, she don't care. She going out and make it happen, get it done, don't care what nobody think. And that's what I'm saying. Why we could let somebody like Ellen go and do all these type of big things and why we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she don't care. No matter what she do, she could be with who she want or whatever. I like that. I I, I just like her swag right. like that. And it that's did what take I'm her a while to get to that point, though. Yeah, but guess yeah. what, though? You have to think out of the box mm -hmm. and right. don't care what people think. The same Absolutely. thing what we saying. They're going to see 10 years from now, I'm telling you, like they're going to see how big Genius Mind Films will be, how big Romeo Land Studio will be. You know, like we're committed to this. Yeah. So it's a difference. It's like it might take a little while. It's That's a cool. journey. It is a journey. Mm -hmm. So my, my thing is, but you want to take all your people on because there's a lot of us that are successful. People say, well, Pete, why don't all y'all get together? I'm not into what they into. <laughs> so a lot of these people own some other stuff that I'm really not into. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I'm committed, but I guess if I'm not into what they into, it ain't going to work. Right. So, you know, I, I respect it. I ain't mad at none of them. I'm, I'm happy for their success, but I'm just saying I think we can do more if we all got together and stopped talking about it. You know, but I don't like if I go in the room, Charlie, man, you say, yeah, Pete, let's go do this, and then you don't talk to you no more. Mm -hmm. What's the use of... That's like a street dude. You you make a commitment. Look, bro, I'm going to do this for you. And then you see the mm -hmm. dude. The dude like, man, I don't want to talk to you no more. Are, you, are they mad? It's just I'm successful. It don't, it don't bother me. Right. But it makes you a loner because mm -hmm. you know you got people out there that you can do a lot of things together. But I don't know. For some reason, our culture, you know, and even instead of embracing, I got the hookup too. Look like every celebrity should be out there. Man, we doing something big for our culture. Mm -hmm. We doing this on our own. How can I support this? You know, now they are some that 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 do. So I definitely want to take my hat off and salute them. The ones that's really like coming up, P man, I'm proud of you, dog. Like, you know, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And that's what motivates me to keep going. Right. You know, I know that I have to do this. Well, I got the hookup too. Comes out July, July 12th, 12th in theaters. Definitely go check it out. Purchase your tickets. If it's not in your area, buy tickets anyway and support. And you said they can stream it as well, right? Yeah. Go to iTunes and uh, you can download it from there. pre ordered now. Mm -hmm. You prefer the movie experience or the at-home streaming? Now, it all depends because some people can't go to the movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's for the ones that right. can't go to the movies where they're sick. Or mm -hmm. they got Because you know there's a lot of beef out there. Everybody can't mm -hmm. go to this place and that place. So we got to make movies for them too. People like so to you, be in the house. Yeah, right? you got to stay in the house and <laughs> come right to your VOD video. <laughs> on demand or whatever, we're gonna reach everybody with with the technology. So it's gonna it's gonna be a process. But I tell y'all, in the next couple of years, you are gonna realize that this one film is gonna change the game to way African American and Latinos the way we make movies mm -hmm. and and own them. All right. Well, it's Master P. We appreciate you for joining us. Yes, sir. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. <laughs> 